Hello everyone and welcome back to The Little Quilter. Today we are putting the final touches on the legendary quilt by Elizabeth Hartman. Um, it's been a really, really fun quilt to do and I'm going to go back in time. Right now I'm ironing the sashing for between each row. And so I'm going to go back in time and show you guys how I would put everything together. As always, everything, um, the, the quilt kit, if you want to do this quilt, will be listed down below. So check that out if you want to check it out. Um, I did purchase this as a quilt kit, but it's certainly something that you guys could make, you know, on your own with your scraps, all of those things. Um, and so far, this quilt has come together really, really nicely. So let's go ahead and jump into that. And then I'll come back and show you guys where I'm at. Okay, so this is going to be the layout of the quilt. I think I think this looks good. A little mix of the trees. I was thinking about moving some of the trees around, but I think it's okay the way they are. I know it gets a little bit lighter up in this area, but then it's like a cascade of events. If I move this guy somewhere, well, even if I moved him down here and this one here, well, then you've got two of the same, so then you've got to move him, so it becomes this sort of like cascade domino effect of I've got to move everything around and then I'll probably end up in exactly the same position it'll just be like switched where these will be up here and those will be up there so we're just going to leave it like it is and now what I've got to do is come through and we've got to do sashing and so there's different sizes of sashing for the outside borders and then the inside and then along here and I have got them over here they're all cut into strips and I'm not going to sub cut them. I'm just going to place them along cut and then, and then cut them. It's just easier for me because in the event that some of these blocks are not exactly the right size, I'm not dealing with, Oh, I'm a quarter of an inch short and then I'm short on fabric. So that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so I have sewn on these, and as you can see, I did it in a strip. I did mess up when I went to, so I did the left-hand side of the quilt first, and then when I went to the, let me grab some scissors here. Maybe. Or not, we'll just use it right right away. So I did have to unpick some because whenever I went to the right hand side of the quilt, I forgot that I was on the right hand side and I needed to sew. So I just did the exact same thing, which is not what you want to do. So I had to unpick that one, which I guess kind of defeats the purpose in chain sewing, but that's okay. Easy fix, came out quickly. And I just did them in a line. So now I'm just going to cut off these tags here on the edges. And that way I have a nice clean, clean, I have a nice clean line whenever I go to sew these. Er. So just cutting off the edges there so that I have a nice clean line on the edge. So whenever I go to sew the rest of it together, it works nicely. All right, so we're gonna iron these. I could have cut the other ones, but we'll just do these first. And 
because there are so many seams here, I'm just gonna press this open along this way. And that way I don't have to try and press open such a bulky seam. I just don't think that is really worth it. I'm interested to see how this comes out because somebody in the comments had mentioned, you know, I was talking about potentially doing the free motion design and not doing the pantograph that I had talked about doing. And somebody had mentioned using the pantograph in the background and just, and then free motion quilting the rest of the quilt, you know, so Sasquatch in the trees, because I definitely feel like these trees could be really beautifully free motion quilted um, and roller quilted as well. I like, for me, quilting is a mixture of both of those. So I can't just free motion quilt. I'm gonna have to use a roller. I'm gonna pull a roller out no matter what I'm doing at some point, even if it's just to outline this. My, I'm so much better at doing straight lines with a ruler than I am trying to do it freehand. So if we're doing swirls and stuff, that's one thing. All right, so there is the side of those two trees done, which is cool. So here is the line that I messed up. Um, it's okay. So we're going to do the same thing for these. So I've gone through and I have chain sewed all of the tree blocks to the sashing and I just went through and did it in a whole line, hence the chain sewing, and now I'm going through and cutting off all of the extra strips, which I can save this for my scrap pile and use it in something else hopefully. I have all these scraps and I'm saving them. What are you guys are you guys doing with your scraps? It's always a question, isn't it, of what to do with the scraps. The only thing I'm concerned about right now as I do all of this is that I'm keeping it in order. And I'm not totally sure that I am keeping it in order, but I do have the video to refer back to, so I can refer back to that if I need to, to make sure that I'm doing this right. Um, the other thing of note is that I did change the layout. So actually, whenever I first showed you the layout, and once I have everything sort of laid out again, I'll show you again. Um, but when I did that layout, what I did was I stuck the Bigfoot in the center of the quilt. So I had two trees on either side. And then the actual diagram of the quilt, she actually has it offset. So it's to the right. Um, and there's only one tree. So I did flip that around. I'm sort of trying to decide the best way to do this. Maybe it would be to cut all of these pieces off and then flip them around rather than flipping them back and forth like I've been doing. But I don't think there's a right or wrong way here. It's just kind of time consuming either way. This is the downside I feel like to chain sewing. I don't know if you guys feel like it's a downside. So like sometimes whenever I'm chain sewing, 
then you then have to go back through and do something else very repetitive. The part of sewing everything so quickly is nice. The, the come back through of ironing everything or cutting everything to me is not always as exciting, but I suppose that's neither here nor there. I definitely don't know that I have these in the right order at all. It'll be okay. I'm gonna lay everything out again, and that way I know. Whenever I am doing this though, I would like to note, I like to lay my pieces generally upside down so that I can cut what would be on the back side. That's why I keep losing, there they are. I keep losing these guys. So that it looks, when I flip it over, it's like this. All right, I think I'm also going to go ahead before I lay this back out and iron everything open. And that way I've got everything done before I need to lay it all out because the next part will be just sewing all of the strips together and that should be pretty easy. Also, I should at least know that I'm in the right direction because all of these are basically going on the right hand side. So we're not going to have two of these sashing strips together, so that should help. Okay, so I've just finished ironing all of these and we're gonna see if I have got this in the right order. I, I honestly don't know if this is in the right order. I wish there was a way. I mean, I guess you could put stickers on these things, but that takes a lot of time and I'm trying to do things efficiently. That's what we'll say. I'm trying to do things efficiently. So let's lay these out, see what we got. All right, so there is part of it. Now, obviously I still have to put sashing in between here, but now I'm ready to sew these rows together, which should go pretty quickly. Since we're putting sashing in, I'm not gonna do the webbing technique, right? So if we weren't putting sashing in, you could do like, well, kind of. See, these are a bit offset, which, yeah, there's a, I wanna, so I wanted to make sure, but yes, these are a bit offset because this block is a little bit bigger. And so the edges on this side don't have that sashing right there, but it's gonna look fine in the end. Pretty happy with it. I think that's the way it was laid out. I'm not sure. I think it looks okay this way though. I'm all right with it. So here we go. All right, everybody. So I have got all of the stashing on now and um, that has come together pretty nicely. I did have to pin each of these rows together. There was a little bit of just wiggle room on either side, but pinning it did the trick and it really did lay down flatly and come out nicely. So now all that's left is to put on the borders.
right, everybody, it's finished. There is the final quilt top for the legendary quilt and I'm so excited to have it done. I'm really excited to start designing on this and getting this bad boy done so that we can get this quilt on. This legendary quilt will be the next quilt that I'll be doing on the long arm and then I am going to follow that up with the bird quilt but this one actually has more of a deadline. So I'm going to give you guys a nice overview of it and that way you can see how it came out in full detail and I'll try and put at least a good long pause so that you can see the whole quilt top on there. And as always, I hope you guys have enjoyed this series. If you have any questions, let me know down below. Otherwise, this is the Elizabeth Hartman quilt legendary and it's a wonderful quilt so check it out and we'll see you next time on The Little Quilter. Thanks. 